I need to revolve my shock. I need to service it. I need to get a fresh fluid for it. I need to uh, reload the nitrogen in it, but mainly the fresh fluid. And I had a crazy idea of uh, softening the high speed just a bit. I went on the YouTube, look for revolving the rear shock. Anything that comes up, it's it's dirt bikes. There's a lot of race tech stuff coming up there. Um, this is shock from RC51, SP2, as those who ride a bike recognize it. And um, haven't seen anything. I actually haven't seen any sport bike shock uh, through the video that will show the, uh, the throughout process of taking it apart, um, doing the revolving, and then putting it back together successfully, and then probably enjoying it, riding it later. So let's get to it. Let's. Uh, Let's start from the beginning. I don't think gonna be anything crazy. We could actually check the pressure. Okay, I got my tool with me. This is the tool. <laughs> this is my uh, mountain bike uh, shock pump. Well, this pump is capable of measuring uh, up to 400 psi. So we in a very good range. Let's see. We got a hundred and. Not even 125 psi. That's supposed to be visible on the on the camera pretty well. Yeah. So I'll check the manual later. I'll find out later for the assembly what's the pressure required, and uh, we'll get there. Okay. So let's release the pressure very safely. Yeah, it went in. I hope it's visible. Just kind of. Put it a little closer. Uh, display on the camera shuts up. Oh, yeah, you can see it. So let's grab some small, uh, slightly dirty screwdriver. And let's remove the seal or the cir circlet. Okay, we got the one ring. Um, good thing to remember. We got a one, two, three, four, fifth ramp. Six, seven, eight, nine. There's a nine of them. The fifth one is the one I enjoy the most. So far, it's a pretty wide range uh, of the weights, and um, from like I guess 180 to 220, from my own experience. Well, I can't say from my own experience, but I'm over 200, heavily over 200 for sure right now. So let's mark the ramp. Make sure we can go back to it, and we'll need to remove the preload from the spring socket. It's easier to do it on the bike, obviously, but yeah, it should be doable here, too. Okay, two more. We have a couple of choices to compress the spring. Um, unfortunately, at this point, this is not a dirt bike. Uh, I'm not going to be able to remove the entire preload from the spring and then back it off enough to, uh, to remove the spring seat. So we're going to have to improvise. Uh, this is one of the uh, bolts that were connecting the the bottom linkage uh, to a frame we're gonna use it on the top they're same size as the uh, looks like a number eight to me so I got everything set it up okay oh yeah it's moving it's moving so let's do one by one okay let's see now good for a long time there you go guys good I noticed that uh, the shark is shrinking with everything hmm 
I think we had, a, think we had an accident. <laughs> nah, anyway, let's clean it up. <laughs> Here's the bladder. Okay. We got this stuff uh, under control. Let's drain the oil. I need the ratchets. Okay, so interesting is uh, I thought we we're gonna see a piston in the reservoir, but we got the bladder. Um, that's even better. Less headache. It's a lot less headache. The piston has to get adjusted into a certain position before assembly. And uh, with bladder, we're not gonna have those problems. This is our shim stack. The shims are okay. I can see uh, they're much thinner than they look. There are multiple ones, I think. Here's a needle. I don't know if you can see it. It's, it's protruding from the port. We are fully open right now. Okay, so it's protruding even further. Yeah, now it's sticking out much further. Okay, we're fully closed on the rebound. Got a little bit of a taper on it. Beside the tip, you can see that it's tapered at 45 degree, but the needle itself, it's oh, that's visible. Adjuster though works pretty well, I can't complain, uh, especially when the fork is uh, shock, sorry, it's, it's fresh, it works out pretty nice. It's pretty responsive to adjustments. We have to get this nut off. Interesting is, there's no, uh, there's no uh, any, um, locking to the nut from what I see right now doesn't look like anyone worked on it I never asked to have this shock revolved it looks factory to me so far let's grab a wrench this is uh, what is this 15 16 let's grab a wrench and we'll be back to it alrighty we got a wrenches so it is a 17, I checked. That's the 17 right here. The bottom is 22. Hopefully we're not gonna release this nut here. Something gonna have to give. Let's see what we're gonna give first. Okay, let's undo the, oh, there it is. There is something that is actually pro protecting the, the nut. This is loose, but it, it, it get harder. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty loose here. That's the tight side, and this is the. So this is somewhat. Um, Doesn't look like it's really um, hammered or anything like that, um, or pressed. Maybe it should be. Maybe it will go. Let me just take this away. I'm just doing a third hand right now, but. Well, it's coming, it's coming. 
Still a little tight spot, but it's gone. Oh. Yeah, Stephanie should go to the vice. It's coming. A shaft is not spinning. I'm looking at it all the time. So it's pretty well. Uh, Yeah, you can see the dirty spot here, and the, it's coming out pretty nice. Okay, look, I'm, I think I'm using like about 20 foot pounds right now of torque, roughly. So it is a little on the tight side, but it's it's coming out. So I'd, I got pretty tight here. Okay, let's go gentle. It's getting a little loose. It was a super tight for a moment, and then still a little tight. Grab the another 180 degree, and should come off. Getting loose. Mm, barely any torque. Yeah. It's almost there. Very light now. Still not loose for finger. Oh, now it's finger tight. There it is. It was somehow protected from unscrewing, but. It wasn't as much as I see uh, out of YouTube videos. Uh, I will need to be nicely, uh, maybe uh, shave it to um, 45 degree on the edges before assembly. But anyway, um, okay. Should we take the shim stack apart? I guess we could. Let's go from the left to right. Single shim. Second one looks a little thinner. I'm gonna measure them in a sec. Okay, let's remove the whole thing. See it? That's interesting. This is thin. Yeah, they definitely not all the same. This is also super thin. Nice and thin. About the same thickness. Okay, so that was our coming out rebound. I'm gonna open up during the expansion of the shock. So that was our rebound. See, it doesn't want to come through. Hmm. Well, this is this is a bummer. Yeah, look like I'm gonna have to grab the file. I'm gonna file this a little bit. File those threads a bit. They're gonna help us with the, with the nut going on, but we're gonna have to use some locking nut, that's for sure. Okay, we have this uh, filed. It didn't it didn't take much of filing. I had it wrapped around uh, just to kind of prevent the unnecessary uh, shavings coming on the piston. So as you can see, uh, pretty much just the outer thread got filed lightly. I wonder how's the nut come down on it. Yeah, it's still got a pretty tight spot, so it's still gonna retain its um, 
safety. Here's the piston, pretty chunky, pretty heavy. You can see that this is um, the factory pistons, uh, they don't have any uh, split on them, but it is uh, Anyway, I got a metal, for sure got a, some metal shavings on it, so I'm not gonna be putting it in the in the in the shock body. So anyway, here's a piston, and here's our shim stock. It's our compression shim stock. It's a little heavier than the um, from what I see right now. I think it's a little heavier than than the rebound. So again, how are we gonna be putting it on? We're gonna be uh, putting it on from on this guy here. This is our bottom piece and then the shims themselves. Clamping shim, the thinner shim, then the clamping. Again the little guy. It's for like second stage. It's a pretty thin. It's quite a few, and then there's the big ones, three of them, kind of similar setup, eh? So you got a three large one that are going to cover the, uh, the piston, we got a six medium ones, let's measure them, by the way. So our shock, that's a 30, 35 mil, so this is going to be a 35 mil, or just under, right, because uh, it doesn't need to be 30, 34 mil. So you got a 334 mil, 32 mil, six of them. Let's find out this one is also. Oh no, they're smaller. That's 30 mil. Okay, 30 mil. 30 mil. So this one is bigger. Yeah. 32 mil. And. Sorry, rebound is 32. And the compression is 34 mil. So compression is slightly bigger. I'm honestly got a wild idea to to drill these holes uh, more. Let me look online, see what the competition does, <laughs> what's aftermarket offers, and then um, we'll think next. We'll, maybe we just remove the, and we're just gonna pull out uh, one of these shims, you know, one this guy, one this guy. Let's get this whole thing little bit softer, flex a little more, allow for a little more flow, but we're still heavily restricted by, by these holes, especially looking at uh, what's really right now in the market. Um, you can look at the all-ins, uh, there's a lot of guys taking all-ins apart, you can see how their pistons look like throughout the um, years they've been producing their suspension on the uh, this is tiny, especially those rebound holes. They're like, there's no rebound, honestly. This was... This was pretty much five mil. Let's see, um, these are obviously uh, Imperial, I think I call them right. This is more than a five mil. That would be live stream. I'll ask you right now. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have an audience, but <laughs> if I would, I'll ask you, hey guys, what, what do you think? And go bigger? And everyone will yell, yeah, let's go big or go home, right? So I'm not gonna go home. I gotta finish this. All right, welcome back. For you guys, been a split second. For me, it was uh, <laughs> two hours or so. So. Uh, I guess we're gonna start from the piston. Uh, it got reworked a little bit. 
it got slightly modified, also got lapped. Uh, I think you see the, the surface is shiny. Could have also kind of sit on both sides. I think it looks more where it should be from the beginning right now. I think it can go any further than that. What's behind the very small ports is, um, I believe myself, this is a, a safety for uh, in case you you hit such a dramatic bump, as I say, pothole fully loaded, maybe higher speeds, maybe you know something that's still manageable. But um, you literally uh, once you've managed to crack open that heavy stack, it's here so many shims. Um, you literally go to the orifice, so the orifice, the size of the hole in the piston, will not allow for any bigger flow than you know what they you know decided through the testing uh, as, as a safety factor so we drilled this a little bit bigger and uh, now they're gonna flow a little bit more and we're gonna rely more on the stock on the on the shim stock than on the uh, orifices uh, themselves or piston itself so I have an idea already how I gonna realign the shims I want to make sure that the um, the rebound is a little bit faster through the shims, that the suspension can recover a little bit better and then shows the better wear on the tire. Also that will allow for the suspension to get ready for the next bump, so you will ride a little bit in the upper stroke where I'm aiming it for. And uh, with compression... Um, I'll probably speed it up a little bit too, just for, you know, trying out new things and see how far we can go. Obviously, we got a very limited uh, room from the shims. From my C, I would like to get a couple extra shims, especially for a clamping shim. I would like to to have a different sizing, more. Unfortunately, right now I can only deal with what I have with the stock shims. Maybe if I. Uh, Probably try to order shims. I already measure them. I already know what sizes they come. I already know the shaft size. So um, I might order extra shims if I find a good source. And then, uh, if necessary, play with it a little more in the future. But for now, we're just gonna put it back on and uh, gonna be happy with the new uh, refresh shock with the fresh oil in it. I'm gonna send it to to be uh, filled with the nitrogen. I'm gonna see how our ideas work for the uh, revolving. If uh, you know, if we're gonna work or we're gonna screw it up. I hope not. Um, we have a lot of room uh, for uh, speeding up the compression and uh, and uh, softening up the compression and uh, speeding up the rebound. So uh, I guess uh, we're pretty safe right now. All right. I'm going to put the shim stack together quickly and uh, we'll come back uh, to the video. And, uh, see the, um, the groove. Both rings are the same size so and the reservoir and the shock body are exactly the same inner diameter. They're square so there's not really any worries about how you put them in. Just be gentle with them. They for sure very uh, brittle. This is in. Okay, um, some people want pump, pumping it up in order to um, get the um, body uh, flash where it's supposed to be. But um, I guess we're going to leave it for now where it is. Um, or we should, or maybe we should. Yeah. Let's pump it up. Let's pump it up a little bit. See what we're gonna get. I use a pump for now. Okay, 
that already sold down. We got a little over 50 psi. So for assembly, we maybe we actually gonna leave it. You know, I'll put about 75. Oh, there you go. We're gonna leave it there for assembly. This way we can uh, bleed the uh, the shock itself. We're not gonna have a compressed uh, bladder inside all the time. Okay, let's pour some oil. We're now about a half of the height. So we got a rebound fully open right now. So they're gonna help us uh, with the bleeding uh, shock. Okay, I can see we have we need some more oil. Should be a uh, should be losing some. <laughs> should be losing some uh, oil as we pressing it in. So maybe a little more. So we are about uh, three quarters right now, so we're gonna go a little more. Okay, that's plenty right now for sure. For sure, we're gonna see some oil being pushed up. There you go. It's already coming through the shaft. Through that's the uh, slow. Rebound. Uh, okay. Okay. So as we're bleeding the shock, um, probably you're gonna see the the hole in the shaft. Obviously, the, we don't want to go with the hole above the level of the fluid, as in this moment it will suck the air inside the shock. So we we're pumping it through, but we're trying to stay below the. Uh, make sure that the entire piston with the bleeding hole is submerged in the fluid. Can lift this up so we see what we're doing. There we go. Still see some bubbles coming up. This part requires a little bit of a patience. Yeah, still uh, I can see the bubbles coming up. As the o-ring is moving on the piston, or not on the piston, sorry, got o-ring right here. But um, the piston itself, uh, uh, there's some uh, or air bubbles coming up on the sides of the piston so I guess that's where the air was trapped There's a little bit of the air bubbles uh, kind of collecting off the edges of the shock body, but that's going to get pushed off uh, in the very end once we're going to be closing the shock. I don't know. I think we're okay. Oh, there's still something releasing. As I just as I said, okay, I see the bubbles. Okay, let's do a couple more times. And Yeah, there you go, that was a big one's coming. So they are still trapped somewhere on the edges of the pistons because that's where actually yeah, I can see them coming. Oops, no, that was a big one's still coming. Okay, and this is fully open. Oh no, it is not. Wow, it's fully open. Okay. Okay. Let's 
sen şu anda. Gonna wake a, a little bit just to get uh, some extra air bubbles. Hopefully. Okay, I think we're good. What we're gonna do is, uh, okay. Let's release the air. Okay. Get all the air released. We're gonna add some oil and uh, close the shock. Okay. Let me just check something before I close the shock. I'm not sure right now do I have the shaft in the upper position, maximum upper position, so for maximum volume of fluid, or I just want to have it down with the uh, with the plug in of the bottom of the shaft. So let me just double check that and I'll be back. Stuff goes inside. So bump stop stays inside. And then we're gonna have a You're gonna have to go down to a floor with it. Okay. Not the most uh, desirable conditions, but it's doable. one first lightly well, there you go we released it pretty well okay now the nut gotta go inside the hole maybe not so easy Try to release this one slightly. See what happens. And that will happen. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Couldn't go any better. Again. Wasn't the safest way of doing it. Not recommending it. As a matter of fact, uh, don't copy me. Don't be so stupid. All right. Looks like we got a shock assembled. We're gonna install it tomorrow and uh, get start working on the fork as soon as we can there it is just gotta drain the air put a nitrogen in it 
And uh, that's our uh, refreshed, uh, revolved RC51 rear shock. Still covered in oil, but I guess that's to these problems right now. Cheers. Thanks, guys.